Prime Minister discusses new bill at weekly cabinet meeting. J-Post Washington correspondent Michael Wilner has the details on a possible Iran offensive. Palestinians say West Bank settlers started a house fire near Ramallah. And Miss World Muslima victory speech shines a spotlight on Palestinians. Shalom and welcome to the Jerusalem Post News. Today is November 23rd and here are your top stories. At the beginning of this morning's weekly cabinet meeting, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu asked how people who support the concept of two states for two people can be opposed to a law designating Israel as the Jewish homeland. מדינת ישראל היא מדינת הלאום של העם היהודי. יש בה שוויון זכויות אישי לכל אזרח ואזרח, ואנו מקפידים על כך. אבל זכויות לאום יש רק לעם היהודי. דגל, אמנון, הזכות של כל יהודי לעלות לארץ וסממנים לאומיים אחרים, אלה מוקנים רק לעמנו במדינתו האחת והיחידה. Netanyahu was referring to his version of the controversial Jewish state law, which has been under discussion in the Knesset recently. The Prime Minister said this law was needed at this time because many people, including Palestinians, are challenging the idea that Israel is the national homeland of the Jewish people. While Iran nuclear negotiations are in full swing in Vienna, reports have surfaced that Israel could attack the Islamic Republic. J-Post Washington correspondent Michael Wilner has the exclusive story. The piece we lead the paper with today has some unprecedented language from the Israeli government, including a near complete dismissal of what's currently on the table in the talks with Iran over its nuclear program in Vienna. Israel believes that the deal currently under discussion will last a short period of time, likely about 10 years, and will then sunset into normalizing Iran as a regular member of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, the NPT. If inspections go perfectly and if Iran chooses to abide by the deal for a decade, it'll guarantee Iran as an industrial nuclear power after that sunset. First off, Israel is not confident in the inspections regime, the enforcement or the intelligence, and thinks that all sanctions will be compromised. But even if all goes as planned according to a deal that may or may not occur this week, Israel's real concern is with this sunset clause, which is included in any deal and which, in its view, ultimately legitimizes Iran as a military nuclear power in the future. That reality, key to any deal, has led Israel to revisit the possibility of using military force unilaterally against Iran. And they seem to be seriously considering whether that's still a viable alternative regardless of either the enforcement regime proposed in a deal or the consequences posed by Europe or the United States should Israel choose to disrupt the nuclear deal with military force. Palestinians say West Bank settlers torched a house in the village of Kirbat Abu Fala near Ramallah early Sunday morning. According to the B'Tselem Human Rights Group, at 3 in the morning, the owner of the house woke up after hearing a noise. She thought her house was being broken into, but then she heard people speaking Hebrew and her windows being smashed. She said a firebomb was thrown through her balcony, which started the fire. Graffiti was found on the house in Hebrew, calling for revenge and reading death to Arabs with a Star of David symbol. Israel police were at the scene investigating. There were no injuries. A Tunisian woman crowned the winner of a Muslim beauty pageant in Indonesia pulled for the Palestinian issue in her victory speech over the weekend. The tearful pageant winner was quoted as saying, please, please free Palestine and the Syrian people. The 25-year-old computer scientist Fatma Ben Gufresh beat out 17 other finalists from around the world who were required to wear traditional headscarves in the competition, which assessed not only the contestants' appearances but also their piety and religious knowledge. The Miss World Muslima Award Contest is held exclusively for Muslim women and has been presented as an alternative to Western beauty pageants, which have been denounced by the Muslim world. And that's all for today. Don't forget to go to jpost.com and check out our Facebook page for more on these developing stories. Until tomorrow, shalom from the Jerusalem Post studio.